Morning guys, what's going on? We just made it back from Florida. Was out there for the iCast and wouldn't you know, I get back and my good buddy Mike invited us out to the property. He's actually got a pond right behind the house out here. And so he said, come on over. We don't know if there's a whole lot of fish in here, but we're gonna give this thing a shot. I brought on all the goodies. I think it's just after 7 a.m. in the morning, guys. So I brought the topwater frog. I brought a bunch of Guggen baits. We really have the whole backpack full of tackle. And it's a little through the creek and trees and brush to get back here. So we're gonna take a look at this pond here in just a second. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit, tie some stuff on, cause I literally, like I said, just got back. I don't have anything tied on except for a fluke, which I don't think is what I'm gonna start with. So I'll probably switch you guys over to the GoPro camera, tie a few things on and have at it. We'll see if there's some fish in these ponds. But at the moment, it's just me, Mike, and the pup Lily <laughs> making our way over. So catch you guys in a second. There's a bunch of thick grass right here, kind of matted up on top of the surface, you guys. We just made it to the spot. I'm gonna find, there's a frog in here somewhere. I think it's this bag, our Florida stuff. We just bought a bunch of random lures. This looks ideal. I'm gonna tie that on and see if we can't get a little frog bite. Otherwise, we'll just start going through the motions and tie on whatever we think they will eat this morning. So let me get this tied up and let's uh, have at it. I wonder if this is better or that's better. We're about to find out. Come over here where it looks to get a little deeper. It's pretty shallow on this end, but this has got some more open water. Yeah. Then there's all kinds of movement right here. That's a turtle. Got him. Got him. First one in the morning, guys. On the frog. Yes. Yes. All right. There we go. That gets us excited. A pond we've never fished that probably never gets any attention out here behind these houses in Mike's neighborhood. Oh my gosh. Yes on the frog bright and early. Look at him, healthy and colorful. I bet you there's some big mamas in here, but we're gonna just go ahead and toss him back and try and get a couple more, you guys. Pond, we've never fished before. Super stoked about this. Look at this chunk. Bam. Let's grab a bigger one. There's no time to waste while the top water bites on. We got the shade over here. They're gonna be hitting probably for, potentially for the next hour, but that's, that's pushing it. So let me get back in here, like I say. We got to secure a couple more catches on this frog if we can. I was working them slow that time. Just kind of walking him back and forth, a little slack when you pop it, and he came up and hit it. Yep, got him. That's what they want, a little bit more popping. There we go, slightly bigger. This one's a pound and a half to two pounds, I think. Oh, look at that head, actually could be good. Oh, nice. Yes, guys, there we go. A little bit bigger. Come on, baby. Choking the frog this morning. Let's get them. Dum, 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 and dum. Second fish of the morning, guys. Check them out. Coming out of the Mike's, coming out of Mike's pond right here. I think uh, they want the frog just popping a little bit more aggressive. That real thrash on that popping frog is what kind of got this guy right here. I'm gonna tie, or I'm gonna get him back. I just had to grab the pliers to get him off the hook. I might just carry the pliers down there with me. But uh, we're gonna get him back in the water, trying to go for something a little bit more sizable. But we're stepping up with each catch so far. This is number two in about 20 minutes. Let's get back in there. Fierce. See, that's what I'm saying. He was in a hurry, dudes. Let's see if we can go two for two with that strategy right there. Just big thrashes. And he hit out pretty far. Something's looking at it. Might be a turtle getting spooked. Someone's looking at it, guys. Oh, he got it. Third, it took him three tries, but he got it. Oh my gosh, biggest one yet, biggest one yet. Yes, yes, he, swi he swiped at it twice before getting it, you guys. So sick, aggressive pops, working it slow. Oh my gosh, they're thrashing. And look, the hooks are way out of the frog. Oop, oop, oop. Man, moving up, and these guys are healthy and fat and colorful, oh my gosh. Okay, look at what he did to the frog. There's no frog left. That's probably because how fat it is, a pound and a half. We're moving up in size. We gotta keep this train rolling. Wow, that's two back to back, guys. I think I identified how they want the frog popped this morning. I'm gonna, I should quiet down, but you know me, I get a little hyped up over these fish catches. Let me see if I can even put this daggone frog back together. There we go, we got what we need. Okay, just fix the frog. Let's get back in there. That took like a minute and a half to fix this daggone frog. Let's go. I think we got all the frogfish we're gonna get out of this little spot right here. So I might switch it up to something a little bit different for a second. We got a few more buddies join the party. Chef Aaron, 
that bass fishing dude, which is Brandon, and then also another buddy of theirs who I think just caught their first bass this morning. And get this, it was on a top water frog. So we're gonna have a few of us hitting this bank right here. Mike just brought them over as well. We'll see who wants to hit this. Has somebody got it? I think you think, uh, yep, first cast with the fluke. First cast with the fluke. Yep. First cast on the fluke, just switched from the frog. Let's go. Oh, he's got it. Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, and he messed the fluke up, but he's got it. There we go. Back to back. Two in a row on the fluke, guys. Sweet. This one's a little fatty. We're having fun catching him this morning, I'll tell you that much. Come on. I ain't got time to mess around. There we go. That's five fish already, guys. We were moving up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. No time to waste. And I would assume that's the fish that missed it and he came back for it. I don't know if that was a second fish because they could just be on a frenzy in here this morning. But uh, who cares, right? Just get back out there. And I've got the fluke to where I can see him just subsurface. So as soon as I see that white disappear, that's when I set the hook. You don't always see the fish swipe at it but you usually, with this ice white color, will just not see the fluke anymore. And you're like, oh, okay, time to set the hook. And this fluke is already becoming harder to rig after those couple catches, and they're so cheap. I'll link them down in the description below. You absolutely have to pick these up. I mean, like, there's no reason why you wouldn't pay like three bucks at Walmart or whatever they are on Amazon. I'll put them in the description and have some fun slaying fish on these flukes, dude. They're just such a fun technique. It's so crazy. Just give it a couple pops, let it pause, and those fish come and hammer it on the paws. And I think I just had one right there, but um, no, I got grass. I was gonna say I felt some weight, but I should have known I was getting played. I'm just gonna put on a new fluke since we've got a bunch of these, bunch of these plastics. I'd rather have it on the hook secured instead of like every time I pop it, I have to worry about it coming off the hook. So let's re-rig. And I'm gonna just take the shoes and socks off and get in the water, I think, because all these things are just pissing me off in this grass oh no it's hard bottom oh yeah we're good oh I say that sweet oh got him. oh nope grass I was gonna say I felt like the brakes are on max the wind is at my back I need to loosen it up a little bit so I can just get a little bit further out and see if that does anything oh and then I forgot to adjust the brakes let me do that now I'm gonna put it on four out of six. That way I can hopefully get out just a little further. There we go. A little, a little more distance, getting closer to the grass line over there. That's good. Well, let's just make it noted, guys. I think the subsurface and top water bite has definitely died off. I've been casting quite a bit more, still getting like hardly any bites. Um, so I might switch over to something else here in just a second. I'm gonna throw the fluke for a few more minutes. I'm sure we can capture some more fish on this thing, but I might start throwing something like a T-rigged um, Guggen bait or something. These things are just annoying the heck out of me. Y'all throwing on the bottom? I was gonna say, I think, I think they moved a little bit further out, man. The bite's definitely slowed. Y'all want to try that creek? Let me uh, let me look a couple up real fast. I think we're actually going to make a move because there's just such limited bank line to hit. It's definitely good if you got the boots and the pants and you're just fishing by yourself. You can hit this whole thing. Or if we maybe get a kayak out here, drop a comment down below if you guys want to see me fish this one with a kayak. I know we didn't pull out any two pluses, but I can all but guarantee they're in here. There's just so much surface area to cover. There's plenty of vegetation. You see the bait fish swimming around. There's, uh, there's tons for these fish to eat. I'm certain that there's a decent sized bass in here. If y'all want to see me try and whip a kayak through these trees in the creek, line and bring it in here drop that down below but otherwise i'm gonna get on fish brain real quick or check google maps satellite view and see if we can't find another spot to hit close by because like i say there's four of us here and it's just a tough it's a tough spot to fish with uh the whole group so let me uh haul it back at you in half a second Second spot, y'all. Well, just rocked up. We've been here before. It's got a lot more grass than the last time, for sure. Summertime greenery. It's a little bit more stained than the last time I remember, too. Might do a black and blue chatterbait. Might throw the fluke. 
Might even toss out the bandito bug. It looks very calm. We might throw something on the bottom. We'll see what happens, man, but we just rocked up. Let's get to it. Do you catch any decent ones out here? Because I think the biggest I've caught is maybe approaching three. I'd say about two and a half. Like oh, yeah, two. dude, that's chunky. Yeah, I caught them down at the end, though. One time I walked up here, I yeah. caught about a four or five pounder. Oh, right my gosh. See, that's what we want right yeah. there. Anything will do, but hey. <laughs> Good sized one. Finally got in front of one. There we go. Uh, Okeechobee, uh, crack and crawl. This is my biggest one of the day, you guys. This is about two pounds. Nice size chunk out of the corner pocket here. Just tried to get over there in that shade and work it back towards me. Line started darting to the left. There was no question that was a fish and he's definitely been caught out of here before. Look at that right there. Definitely been caught. Nice sized guy right there. We will take that one. Let's try and have us another. That was on the Okeechobee craw color, you guys. It's got that green top with some blue flake, and then on the underside, it's got a really shimmery blue finish. Perfect, I would say, for the water clarity today, which is next to nothing. You really gotta get a bright flash in front of them. My opinion, it, uh, you know, you could certainly catch them on just an all naturalish green color in here, but I have more confidence in something that stands out a little bit when I'm fishing water that is just not the clearest. And so that is why I'm rocking the Okeechobee Craw as opposed to going with another Guggenbait, as opposed to going with another color I had lying around. Should be right there, just an Okeechobee Craw cracking Craws. Perfect. Chef's gonna grab one too. See if we can't tear up this corner right here. Well, that was a confidence boost. I don't think any of us have got a catch out of the five of us. Guys, I moved down a little bit and positioned myself right along this grass edge. For me, anytime I see thick grass like this, I'm always wanting to get right on the edge of it. And if you can cast along it, that's great. But usually it's like kind of running down the bank. And so you can kind of get a cast going just uh, parallel to the bank and reel it in for a ways. So you can have a little bit of that retrieve in the prime zone. And then once you get a little closer, you just got to kind of pop it, uh, pop it out and over. But for me, I've got a straight shot right here along this edge. And what happens is the bass like to hang out and just cruise or even just chill right along the edge here. And Cause little fish, plane was going by. But what I was trying to say is all the little fish basically hide and reside in this grass stuff. And then when they swim out, the bass are ready to ambush them. So I want to cast along here any chance I get because there's a good chance you'll get a hit from a bass lurking, ready to eat. We're making a move, y'all. We're gonna maybe hit a third spot. It's uh, untold at this point, but we just, this was a tough bite, man. The grass was terrible. The bugs are loud, that's for sure. And I was, I think, the only one that got a bite, so it was just kind of thumbs down today at this spot, which is normally actually a heavy hitter. So don't, 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 don't have, don't lose faith in this place. I've definitely had a morning where I caught like 10 at one time, uh, 10 at one time, 10 in one session. But anyways, we're gonna probably hop down the street close this thing out, catch some more fish for you guys. Hopefully get one a size this morning. Let's work towards it. We just made it, y'all. All on Brandon's lead over here. We hit the golf course and a homie ran into us and said, hey, if y'all just fish this other side, we got golfers on the course. We said, yes, sir. You mean you're not kicking us out? <laughs> oh, I saw that. Dang. Dude, that fish is so freaking skinny. What the heck? Yeah, I'll put him down here because that water is kind of uh, little bluegill chase. Yeah, little bluegill or whatever. Oh, had him. Got bites. He's taking it. He's taking it. Got him. Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't want to. I didn't want to like yank the hook into him, but I should have. I'm thinking these are little guys in here, so I don't want to just pull them out of this. Got him. <laughs> little guy out the corner pocket first fish at spot number three little guy little guy he was gonna eat that fluke though let me tell you what me uh, i was throwing the crawl that got the bites and then i and then i switched to this fluke oh there he is yeah two and two minutes this one's got a cool pattern oh well oh oh you. There we go. That's how you break right there. Oh boy. I think he's gonna just end up getting back in himself. Go on, little fella. Oh, you got it. 
He knows his way. All right, I can't believe we nailed him out of this corner spot, guys. We gave that a fair shot. I think there's probably a few more fish in here, but I'm going to work my way back out there where it opens up. Let's get her done. Well, folks, we might be wrapping it up. A couple more casts, but we've caught some awesome fish, man. You know they're right here. All right, I'm going to cast here three times. I'll see you. Easy, man. See you on the flip side. All right, pleasure to meet you, bro. Catch you around. The boys are taking off. I just wanted to get one cast in here because it looks, it looks nuts. We gonna make this happen. Got him. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh my gosh! And he flew off. No, no, no! I don't know where he's at. Oh my gosh! The hidden bass. Oh, he. Oh, he's going back down to the water. Try and get another. The current gets these bass going, man. There's more in here. It's had bites, but I think it was a bluegill. They are stacked in here. Just had more bites, and he just took the claws off this thing. Oh, my gosh. Let's try on another crack and crawl. I think we can get a few more. Got him. Got him. There we go. There we go. That's a good one. Oh, come on up. I think it's a good one. I can't even tell. Oh yeah. There we go. Pulling out some good bass from the waterfall. Heck yes, guys, this is nuts. That's what I'm talking about. Let's snag a few more. We gotta leave quick. So it's easy for me to it's easy for me to bring the retrieve in through here, but I'm casting off the point and then kind of walking over. That way I can make it happen. Oh, oh sh Had a hit. There he is. Got him. Got him. Back to back. Two casts in a row. All right, that's three out of here real quick. Let's just, let's just keep the ball rolling, guys. Bite's hot right now. Bite's hot. This is absolutely nuts. Can we get a couple more before we have to leave? Let's try that again. Let's go three for three. We are literally going three for three right now off this point. Three, four, three. I think it's gonna happen. I can see clearly now the crack and crawl. Okay, we missed three for three. Got him. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Yep. Oh gosh. Yes. <laughs> we might have to call it on this one. That's just such a sick bite right here. Oh my gosh running low on this GoPro battery. I could change it, but these hogs are just lighting this thing up. One pound, 12 ounce. Dope, guys. One and three quarters. I think that's gonna end the pond hopping. Let's get him on back. You Sick bite out here by the waterfall. Okay, just got it all loaded up back in the truck. That was a sick waterfall bite, you guys. Holy smokes, that was nuts. We were grinding it out in the creek and at that last spot for at least a half an hour trying to get two, three fish total. And then boom, four fish off that little water spout right under that tree. I'm gonna go ahead and link Chef Aaron and that bass fishing dude, Brandon's Instagrams down below. Go ahead and check out their stuff. Brandon's got an awesome channel. I'll even put that down there as well. Just wanted to let you guys know real fast, those Guggenbait Kraken Craws and the 4 ot Stickies Worm Hooks I've been getting from Carl's, Shop Carl's for 30% off. Literally, it's the best place to buy Guggenbaits at this moment. At the time of this video, you can get every pack for $4.19 as a Carl's Club member. Save so much on your tackle. 30% off has been absolutely crazy. I've been stocking up every single month. So check out Shop Carl's down in the description below and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Boom.